What is the best Terraria weapon? Well, if you said the Zenith, I'm afraid you're actually wrong, because as of the 1.4.4 update, there's actually been a hidden secret mechanic, which if utilised correctly, can create a weapon so powerful, it puts even the Zenith to complete shame. Today, I'm going to be showing you the exact method you need to follow in order to get your hands on something quite special, and how it performs compared to the current king, the Zenith. Before we jump into it, if you enjoyed the vid, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, as this guarantees the next shot from a gastropod will completely miss. <laughs> Alright, let us jump into it. Before anything else, in order for us to obtain this upgrade, we need to make a new world with a custom seed. Don't worry about what you call it or the other settings though, just make sure the seed reads Zenith Sucks with a capital Z at the start and a lowercase z on the end. Once you're in your world, you're going to want to immediately start digging down and find yourself an underground mushroom biome. What we're looking for in particular is, is a natural mushroom chest. Now, for me, quite a few of these biomes didn't have them, but after exploring for some time, I came across one in a mushroom house. With this obtained, before we can start the actual process, there is one or two more things we need to have two copper short swords. While you can use the world spawn one for yourself, you'll need to craft another one at an anvil and make sure it has the broken prefix. This is very important and if you've got a goblin tinkerer, make sure to get it before continuing. Right, with the broken copper short sword in hand, you're going to want to place this in the top left hand corner of the mushroom chest. Now we can get on with the serious stuff. In order for us to upgrade this copper short sword into a godlike weapon, we'll need to eliminate the eye of Cthulhu completely hitless. Which doesn't sound too bad at first until I tell you this has to be done entirely with just a copper short sword. Luckily, the devs weren't too cruel and made it so you can use late game armor and accessories to make it a bit easier. As you'd expect though, this is still very much a challenge and on many occasions, you'll probably get hit once and have to completely restart. But after enough perseverance and an unholy dodge from my hallowed armor, I managed to take it down. With this, we should be finished and if you've done it correctly, you'll see your upgraded copper short sword in place of the old broken one, now with the legendary prefix. Okay, let's see what it can deliver. To put it simply, with a base damage of 191,999, the copper short sword can reach DPSs into the tens of millions just on a single target alone, firing a frequent rapid terror blade sword projectile infinitely at the case's position. Compare this to the Zenith's measly 4000 DPS, it already doesn't really stand a chance. And it gets better, because the copper short sword also infinitely pierces targets, making it ridiculously effective against lines. Here you can see it effortlessly reaches over a billion DPS, which should be more than enough for any vanilla content. Okay, while the numbers might be impressive, let's see how it does against the real thing. Honestly, there's not really much point testing them on regular enemies, as it just deletes them instantly, even for biome mimics. So let's jump straight to bosses. How about 30 planteras? Well, that's that. In only a few seconds, the piercing deals with all of them at once. So 30 golems, maybe? Oh, same again. It seems the copper short sword doesn't really care how many targets it has to get through. Perhaps a group of cultists could be different. Nope, once again, the copper short sword's power makes anything look like a green slime. And funny enough, a result of killing so many cultists means our world is now full of pillars, which isn't a problem again for the copper short sword, being able to deal with large quantities of invasion type enemies with ease. And luckily, we don't even have to get 50 kills per pillar, as the shields all break at the exact same time. And so with these demolished, let's see what it does against the one and only Moon Lord. As just expected at this point, the Moon Lord doesn't really stand a chance, and oh, he's already dead. If you haven't already, you really need to give this upgraded copper short sword a try. Yes, it can be difficult to obtain, but just think of that sweet, sweet reward you get at the end, making all the pain worth it. This has been Socrates, and I'll see you in the next one.